Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to send this message to the participants in the 10th annual meeting of the World Policy Conference, which has been convened in its 10th session in Marrakesh. Placed under my partner patronage, this important meeting in the Ocker City offers and even figures from a wide range of backgrounds the opportunity to discuss major regional and global issues. It also contributes to improving governance in terms of thinking, decision making, and control. The aim is to promote the advent of a more open world which respects diversity. In-depth reflections and constructive debate will certainly lead to the emergence of new ideas and fresh solutions that will further improve our country's development models. The undeniable progress that Africa has made has not gone unnoticed. In fact, it has been followed with growing interest by the international community. Needless to say, the path to prosperity is a lengthy, complex process. We can say, however, that citizens' main aspirations, especially African citizens, can be fulfilled only through inclusive human and economic development programs that are based on a regional or continental vision. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as a convinced son of Africa, I plead once again for the need to support the continent which has managed to shape its own destiny thanks to the pole, medium, and long-term structural reforms undertaken in various sectors in the long and medium run in order to include various sectors. It is our responsibility to foster innovative strategies and ambitious policies which should not only be based on the accomplishments that have already been made, but which should also draw inspiration from successful initiatives at global level, which are which go hand in hand with the diversity of our economic and cultural realities. In parallel, it will be necessary to strengthen and to streamline our institutions and promote good, gov good governance and significantly improve the way public funds are used. Today, Africa has tremendous assets in terms of human capital offer an exceptional opportunity to achieve progress. Being part and parcel of a constructive drive to transform the continent's economy, young Africans, far from being a handicap, are a major asset in this regard. Through the development and implementation of sound economic positive changes that are taking place in the continent. This is why to adopt efficacious um, policies in educational, vocational training, and health policies will actually create an integration of youth inside the social economic fabric of our countries. These initiatives would result in stronger, inclusive, and sustained growth that would create jobs and boost productivity. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, there is an abundance of natural resources in our continent that are yet to be fully exploited. In this regard, bringing about a paradigm shift in the farming sector and establishing bridges and synergies with industry would also create jobs. This transformation of African agriculture should happen at all levels, from primary production to agro-industrial value chains. This should help us make the most of the continent's enormous agricultural potential. 
in our continent, especially in arable lands and offset the social economic difficulties faced by agricultural stakeholders, which are difficulties that are mostly related to low outputs and productions. This leads us to mention the concept of green revolution. Green revolution that we want to be based on a large scale overhaul of technology and production methods while taking into account the specificity of the African reality and the climate change that the same is facing. It is pretty fine to us to see that Morocco's commitments in terms of accelerating agricultural growth and achieving sustainable development in Africa are helping to meet positively the food needs of Africans on a continental scale. As for Africa's industrial sector, it is still not competitive. In this regard, the two main challenges facing Africa's industry are the development of innovative activities on the one hand and the training of a skilled workforce on the other hand. Alongside private investments, new forms of financing and partnerships must gradually be developed in order to encourage the growth of transformative objects projects and speed up their implementation. It is also necessary for us not to ignore the fact that we urgently need to solve definitively and pragmatically the issue of the lack of <coughs> infrastructure on our continent. We all know and are aware that where there are roads, connectivity and networks, development takes hold and precariousness ceases to exist. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is high time the strategic priorities of the international community were recast by revisiting Africa's contribution. Given the recent developments and the clear progress <coughs> made by Africa, it is of the utmost importance that our continent be front and center of a redesigned world stage and that its voice be heard at global level. Africa is open to multidimensional partnerships covering the institutional, political, economic, social and environmental spheres, as well as other areas relating to the prevention of radicalization and the fight against terrorism. As they capitalize on the potential for North-South cooperation as well as on each other's experiences, policy makers can build stronger, more realistic and, above all, more equitable cooperation relations. This is what we would give a revamped North-South partnership its full meaning. There is no doubt, and we're convinced in that by being united, cohesive, and pragmatic, Africa will be able to hold its rightful place in such a process. I am pleased <coughs> to note in this respect that there is a common desire among all African countries to achieve greater integration. Such a goal requires that all stakeholders, public as well as private, avail themselves in a pragmatic way of all the opportunities that arise and that they face up to challenges and threats together. Ladies and gentlemen, today, the era of a passive Africa <coughs> suffering, suffering from a complex environment is over. A proactive Africa is replacing a submissive continent. In that light, Africa's potential and its assets are better harnessed. These assets are better harnessed of this 
continent when firm growth benefits all segments of the population. The continent has resolutely embarked on a path towards prosperity. Today, it is also undergoing rapid changes as it builds on its own model and as well as on a vast array of partnerships. This is how we have new shape emerging from Africa as a continent of options and not a continent of constraints. But to lay the groundwork for the future of young African generations, we need to deploy efforts in order to achieve the goals. Over and above, we call upon you to think in addition to the partnerships that are South-South and North-South, which have become more dynamic and more numerous. Let me invite and in other fields and uh, new exchanges and partnerships. Let me invite you to consider that in order to guarantee a better future for our people and peace be upon everybody. God bless you. Mohammed VI, King of Morocco. Thank you very much indeed.